you. Um, and yeah, big thanks to Juliet and team, um, especially Juliet for all her support. Because I think the thing to say up front is that my placement runs on a very different timetable, which I've put sort of front and centre there, which is uh, May to October. So I don't have any conclusions for you yet, but I would really welcome the opportunity to share those at a later stage. Um, okay. Let's just move on to here. I wanted to um, sort of start by reflecting on the fact that I think the biggest advantage and threat to this particular placement was the kind of massive sort of kind of scope of the work. And I'm going to talk a bit in this presentation about how we've kind of focused that. Um, what this kind of general information about the Centre for Cultural Value gives is the kind of baseline sort of reasoning for this placement, which was that my role as policy officer at Centre for Cultural Value is new. And this is very much a kind of um, embedded sort of learning opportunity for the centre about how um, policy can work and be developed at a local authority level. And I'll say a bit more about that in a sec. Um, so our core partners and funders are there. But what's important to sort of say at this point is that I think I've been struck all along through, you know, through the placement to date by kind of the real benefit to this partnership has been how kind of genuinely kind of equitable it is. So I work directly to Pam Johnson and her cultural programs team. You're going to hear from Pam later on um, in the workshop. Um, but Pam also kind of represents um, the council as an affiliate partner at the Centre for Cultural Value. And so we, we're in this really kind of sort of toing and froing discussion about what we're developing as part through the placement and also how the centre is developing as a whole, which I think is, is one of my biggest takeaways at this point about how these placements can be effective in the future. <clears throat> so, as I said earlier, it's a huge kind of a, a sort of a huge in scope opportunity, this project, we call it the Cultural Impacts Research Partnership. Um, What's really important to kind of hold on to is this is this kind of top line of um, informing and shaping how cultural programs tell their story. So you'll see from my kind of next slide, which is my kind of matrix <laughs> of, of all the work that we're across. Um, this this is kind of the heart of, of, of our mission and what Pam and I return to every time we meet really is uh, it, it, it's it's kind of okay we're doing this with health we're doing this with inclusive growth but actually how is this informing how is this shaping what cultural programs want to say about their work with the city of leeds and the people that they work with okay so at this point in time what i've done is try to kind of give you a bit of a map of all of the kind of intersecting uh, areas of focus and large kind of other uh, strategies or projects that we, can, we, we encounter along our way. So the, the first three columns um, summarise the kind of areas that I'm working in. So the cultural investment funds for Leeds City Council are under review. I'm part of that um, team that are consulting and evaluating and looking at how the um, grant making will change in the future, but also specifically my role is advising on how those funds will be evaluated in the future. It's probably important to say at this stage, I have a background pre being at the centre in lottery fund design and dissemination and audience development work. <clears throat> we come on to impacts. And again, I've put storytelling kind of top here um, amongst these other kind of huge <laughs> areas about data ambitions and specifically confidence. And this is confidence within the cultural programs team and the council as a whole that the data that the council will go on to collect will give them a position of confidence to talk about that story. Um, inclusion uh, really is the kind of third and, and kind of most um, further to develop element of what we're working on. So we look directly to the best city ambition that Leeds City Council has outlined and specifically the inclusive growth strategy and the health and well-being strategy. So this was my warning at the top about these like huge areas that we're trying to intersect with. Um, so we, I think my learning at this stage, um, and we, I think we'll talk more about this in the workshop on Friday, is that 
there are humongous kind of timelines and complementary strategies that really for, for our work and for the kind of core of what Pam and I are trying to achieve to be effective, we have to be cognizant of those. And actually what I would say has been amazing is how kind of open and sort of genuinely curious council colleagues across those departments have been in what we're trying to achieve. And I think if that hadn't been the case, we, you know, we wouldn't really be getting anywhere. So that's my final point there is that this has been a very iterative process. Um, we're aiming towards a, cult a whole cultural strategy refresh for the council, but we're factoring in um, work around th that's ongoing at the moment around the evaluation of Leeds 2023, the big consultant con consultation event we held um, called Beyond 23 the other week, and then returning to the emerging kind of policy engagement strategy for Centre for Cultural Value. And I'll stop there. Thanks very much. <laughs>